Hey guys, so in mid-2018, I bought the Dell G7 7588 to run as my daily computer. And my choice was primarily based on the great thermal performance at this price range, considering the 6 cores and the GTX 1060 specification. I run a lot of renders and simulations for hours at a time, not to mention gaming. So having the laptop run as cool as possible was critical. That said, I've always thought the temperatures could be better. For CPU only tasks, the temperatures would hover around the 75 to 85 degree range at the 45 watt TDP. However, the temperatures were subpar for CPU intensive games like Far Cry New Dawn, where the CPU would spike as high as 99 degrees C, causing all sorts of problems including both CPU and GPU throttling. This tended to get worse as time went on, probably due to dust buildup, prompting a repaste. Having heard very positive reviews about the Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut Thermal Paste, it was the obvious choice, as I wasn't quite up for the liquid metal challenge and potential risks. To clean off the old paste, I went with ArctiClean, thermal surface cleaning set, as it proves to be effective in removing old paste and purifying the surface. As for the actual teardown of the laptop, I won't go through the entire process, as Bob of All Trades has a very concise video that describes the entire teardown, which can easily take 2-3 to three hours. I will, however, make a few points that he may have forgotten to mention. The first is to make sure that, on top of disconnecting the CMOS battery, screen protector, system battery and Wi-Fi card, also disconnect the small webcam mic wire that runs along the Wi-Fi cable to free up the motherboard when the time comes. Also, disconnect each and every cable positioned just above the battery as each of these is tied directly onto the motherboard. The screen cable has a thin plastic ribbon positioned right above the connector. This is supposed to be used to disconnect the display cable. Pull on it gently, alternating on either side until you can pry the connector loose. Also, just as Bob mentions to reposition the power cable when reassembling the laptop, it is equally important to free up this cable when removing the motherboard as it is positioned on tabs within the inner plastic housing. Finally, don't forget to remove the four screws underneath the SATA cable, as these connect the inner plastic housing to the upper part of the chassis. The more I got into the layers of the laptop, the more I realized just how much dust and grime buildup there was. A word to the wise. Always use the laptop on a clean surface. The air intakes will suck up a lot of dust and fiber, which over time build up and cause further cooling issues. Once fully disassembled, pry apart the cooler to reveal the CPU and GPU dyes, as well as the old thermal paste. Both the dyes and the cooler surface need to be cleaned off and purified before applying the new thermal paste. The ArctiClean paste cleaner works well for this purpose. When the surfaces are squeaky clean, proceed to apply a small amount on the center of each die as shown. Not a lot is needed, as this material is spread evenly once the heatsink is reinstalled. To reinstall the heatsink, Align the screw holes on both the heatsink and the motherboard from above and slowly press it down onto the newly applied paste, then reinstall the screws firmly in place. Follow the other reassembly instructions as outlined in the other tutorial videos. With the laptop reassembled, you can proceed to test the thermal performance of your system. I started with the IDA64 stress test. Previously, while running the combined CPU-FPU cache stress test, I achieved temperature averages 
of 86 degrees C at a 45 watt TDP and a clock speed of 2.9 gigahertz on all cores with max temperatures of 98 degrees C at 63 watts and 3.5 gigahertz. Overheating and thermal throttling was detected during this test. After the repaste, however, this temperature dropped significantly by over 10 degrees C to an average temperature of 75 degrees C at 45 watt TDP and 3.36 gigahertz with a max boost wattage and temperature of 70 watts and 90 degrees C respectively. Not once did the system thermal throttle. On to the gaming test. I will use Far Cry New Dawn to gauge the system due to its high CPU and GPU demands, which often cause overheating for most systems. Before the repaste, and with ultra performance power profile selected, CPU temperatures easily topped 98 degrees C, with the GPU steadily creeping up past the 86 degree C mark. With the repaste applied though, the CPU never breaks 90 degrees C and the GPU stays comfortably in the mid to high 70s even after long gaming sessions. This can be further improved by limiting the CPU clock to 3.4 GHz on throttle stop, at which point both the GPU and CPU will never break past the 80 degrees C mark. Less CPU demanding games like Dirt Rally 2 can easily maintain temperatures in the high 60s and low 70s even for extended periods. Even when it comes to benchmarks, higher scores are easily achieved in 3D Mark because of the higher maintained boost clocks and I was even able to boost my GTX 1060 Max-Q GPU by 200 MHz on the core and 350 MHz on the memory and still maintain overall system stability. So, would I recommend a repaste of the Dell G7? Totally. The biggest improvement comes not just in the form of lower overall system temperatures but in the system's ability to handle power boost spikes from the CPU much better than before due to the higher thermal efficiency of the thermal grizzly paste. That said, the process can be very daunting with a variety of potential risks and the procedure may also void your warranty. If you do feel brave enough though, a repaste is well worth the upgrade. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below.